I just love applications. And for that matter, I love hosts. And I'm not biased. I love flavors of Unix. I love Mac systems. I love Windows systems. I've even learned to love Windows 8. <laughs> well, in this particular nugget, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at just an overview of applications and host systems and talk about important mechanisms inside them. And a recurring theme in this presentation is going to be virtualization. We have to remember the importance of virtualization in all aspects of today's data center. So we really spend our days accommodating the hosts that are out there wanting to consume the data that we store for them in our storage infrastructure. Here you can see some key components today about a typical host. We have the operating system, of course, on that host. And these days, more than ever, you see virtualization when it comes to this operating system. So you have hardware, and then on top of that, you have a virtualization layer, and then you often have your operating system. So this layer right here of virtualization seeks to abstract that hardware and use it more efficiently in many environments. If you've got a lot of hardware, let's say eight cores in your CPU, and let's say, oh, like 32 gigabytes of RAM, what people will do is literally run multiple OSs on this particular host now. So it's a new world thanks to virtualization. This layer right here is often called the hypervisor. And we know that one of the companies that really pioneered this virtualization and still is a huge player today is VMware. And as you might guess, plenty of VMware courses as options for you here at CBT Nuggets. This is such an important technology, but realize they're not the only player. For instance, Microsoft these days in their server 2012 system allows you to add a hypervisor that's chained to the operating system called Hyper-V. And with Hyper-V, we can go ahead and run these different operating systems inside of that scope of virtualization. So hosts, yeah, a lot has changed lately with hosts thanks to this virtualization that we see being utilized so often. Now, when you look at a host itself, let's say it's a Windows 7 machine, a real typical host operating system, realize that it's playing with virtualization itself. Yeah, let's say this particular host has two gigabytes of RAM, of random access memory. What it might have to do when things get really intense with what it's working with, it might have to go to the disk storage and do virtual memory. That's right, virtualization once again. And it creates what's called a swap file on the disk storage system and starts pretending that is random access memory. There is a virtual memory manager that does this for the particular host. So that's something to keep in mind uh, for virtualization as well, when it comes to our hosts, there's memory virtualization. 
Now, one of the things that we need to do is install device drivers to get particular components working in a host. So if we're adding a host bus adapter to our host and the HBA makes a fiber channel connection out to some storage resource, sure enough, there's going to be device drivers for that HBA that are trained to make it work with the particular operating system that we're dealing with. Something else that we have with our hosts, thank goodness, is volume managers. Oftentimes, these days, it's called a logical volume manager. And thank goodness for the logical volume manager, because what used to happen to us in the past was we would add a disk system to the host, and that host just didn't have flexibility when it came to using that data store. The logical volume manager that we have today allows us to be very flexible with the disks. So let's say we have a host with one physical disk. Thanks to the logical volume manager, we can go in and we can do partitioning of that disk. So you can go in and you can create a partition for the operating system itself. Then you could create a partition for your data, for instance, and you would back up these two things on different schedules because the data is what you're most concerned with, for example. So, logical volumes can be created in a partitioning scheme thanks to the logical volume manager that is so common today. Now, when you partition your logical volumes, you need to put a file system in place that the operating system will recognize. Uh, common examples, of course, are things like FAT32 in a Microsoft Windows environment or NTFS, an improved file system that Microsoft Windows offers. Or how about the Unix file system or UFS? So a file system is going to give you a logical way in which to work with all the stuff that you have stored. We have directories, subdirectories, files that become part of that file system. And remember, I just can't emphasize enough the importance and how frequently we see virtualization today. Think about it. You could have your hardware, then you could have your virtualization layer. Let's say we're using ESXi, which is VMware's hypervisor product. A very, very thin layer of software that sits on top of the hardware for the purposes of virtualization. Then I install my operating system. Let's say it's server 2012 from Microsoft. Then I install on that Hyper-V. And then I install on that maybe Ubuntu. So it's just absolutely amazing the layers of virtualization that we can end up with in today's environment. And don't forget, within an operating system, as we discussed, you have virtualization taking place within the OS. So absolutely virtualization is here to stay. Embrace it and start to work with it and you'll find that it's going to make your life much, much easier. Now, of course, one of the components that we 
are so in love with these hosts for is the particular applications that they run. So we have an app on our particular host. Keep in mind, we may be virtualizing this application, so we may be running it in a virtualized environment. A moment ago, I talked about a Windows server system that might be running Ubuntu. That's exactly what I do. That's exactly what I do every day. I have a server 2012 system that virtualizes the Unix Ubuntu so that I can run a particular application that only runs in that Unix environment, specifically the Linux environment. So notice we're app, but uh, we're virtualizing a lot just to run applications these days. Applications often run against a relational database management system. This is a way that we can store our data in a structured manner. And of course, Microsoft SQL Server is one of the many RDB MS MSs that is possible that is popular thank you and this is another product that you can find extensive training on here at cbt nuggets so the app runs against the data stored in the relational database management system which of course hits our storage how much I.O. utilization goes on for that particular storage is going to be a function of how the relational database management system operates and how the app operates. Not all apps are tied to relational database management systems, of course, and you're going to find some utilize your storage quite heavily, while others are utilizing maybe web-based resources and not putting nearly the strain on your storage infrastructure. So we have to really study the applications that we're going to utilize, realize their data storage requirements, and then build our system appropriately. So as we tour the modern data center, in this particular nugget, we took a stop at hosts and applications. And we discuss these components that are critical when it comes to accessing that important data that we want to store for an enterprise. Obviously, a recurring theme here was virtualization. I sure hope this nugget was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.